It's like tap water and partially mixed together. He's so bland. He's so dry. I don't know what Riley and Maya saw in him, but they peaked in eighth grade. No reason for y'all to break up Shining Angela in the discussion. In a way, I don't like Cora and Topanga. I thought they were both really irritating characters. It was a really toxic relationship. I was mad to see that they got married and. It's Hariana and I'm back with another video. Now, if you're new, welcome on board the pirate ship. The pirate ship. You in for something. You in for something. Harry Hook's pirate ship. It is always a trip over here. It truly is. Before I even get into today's video, we will be discussing the topics of ableism, diversity, and grooming so yeah if any of those subjects are like a little triggering for you just just a heads up y'all have been asking me to speak about girl means world and that surprises me but one thing about you guys that i don't think you know is that i used to be a fan of big girl meets world i used to be a huge stan i it's weird because i was not a fan of boy meets world at all i actually really hated boy meets world when i was younger and i didn't really start to enjoy it until i gotten older and i really only liked it for sean and angela we'll get into sean and angela later though because yeah but um yeah i was not a fan of boy meets world thought it was really annoying i don't like Cora and topanga i thought they were both really irritating characters it was a really toxic relationship i was mad to see that they got married and they had a whole spin-off show with an annoying child anyway we'll get into that later but yes i was a really big fan of girl meets world and i still do like the show to this day but it has a lot of flaws that we need to address because it it's not aging well let's just go ahead and say that Girl Meets World truly is a product of its time of the uh, mid-2010s. The fact that that time period is becoming nostalgic already is kind of scary. Time needs to slow down. Like I said, I used to be like a really, really big fan. I knew about a lot of the fandom drama. I was really like a Tumblr stan. Like I first made my account on Tumblr when Girl Meets World was like popping, popping. And yeah, my early Tumblr vlog is just Girl Meets World stuff. It's just Girl Meets World stuff. It's either Girl Meets World stuff or stuff that my friends post. It's, it's kind of funny. You go back that far. You're probably not going to go back that far. You can just search Girl Meets World on my blog if you want to find anything. Oh yeah, for you guys who don't know, today's hairstyle is inspired by Evie. I don't know if you watched my last video, but yes, Miss Evie from Descendants inspired today's hair. We got to give her her props. Evie is the one who started the royal blue hair. I don't care what nobody says. Evie did that said I was in love with this show but this show has so many freaking I was like a hardcore stan of Girl Meets World I used to follow the whole entire cast on everything and it's strange because I don't even like most of the cast anymore with the exception of um Sabrina Corey and Amir I don't care for none of the rest of them oh Sean uh, the actress who played Sean and Angela I still care for them but everybody else I don't care for mm -mm. I don't like most of them. Also, Yendra, Zayas, Zayas, Kylie Russell, and Chandler Kenny. They technically were cast members of Girl Meets World, but they only had like brief appearances. But I still care about them. Like, you know, the only black girls of the show, which we will get into because <laughs> what exactly is Girl Meets World about? Girl Meets World is the coming of age tale of Cora and Topanga's really irritating child named Riley Matthews. I like Riley let's just go ahead and say that she has that main character syndrome I don't like her she's so annoying she needs to be popped in the mouth sometimes because she thinks that she can do no wrong she thinks she is so perfect and I can't freaking stand it I can't freaking stand it I don't like the way she treats her best friend I don't think Riley Matthews is a good friend at all to both Farkle and um Maya and I only liked her when she was around Farkle because Farkle seemed to be the only person that put her in her place from time to time. I don't know why Maya was too scared to do it, but Maya could literally run up on somebody else. But when it came to Riley, she couldn't say anything. That's why I was just like, okay, Maya. I love you, though. You were, like, the best thing about the show. Maya was the real main character of Girl Meets World, if we're being honest. What made... I don't even like Rowan Blanchard. That's what makes my dislike for Riley even worse, but... 
Yeah. She's no Mal though. She's not a Mal though. I can I can tolerate being in the same room with a Riley Matthews. Mal birth on the other hand, no. If you guys want me to just go more in detail about why I don't like Mal Bertha, I made an entire video about why I don't like her, but I realized I went back and watched it, and I was like, yeah, I didn't really go much into detail, and I, I'll go into detail if you want. Like, if y'all want it, I'll make it. Like, if no one wants it, I won't make it, and I'll just keep all that business on Tumblr. Yes, it was her coming of age tale of Riley Matthews and everything that revolved her and her friend circle, which included Maya Hart, Farkle Minkus, Zay Babineau and Lucas Fryer and Lucas Fryer literally is like the most blandest character ever. He is like tap water and partially mixed together. He's so bland. He's so dry. I don't know what Riley and Maya saw in him but him and Maya's dynamic was so beautiful and I hate how it was played out. We will get into that later but yes Girl Meets World basically is white Moesha. That, that's the best the way that's the best way to sum it up show started off when the characters were in middle school seventh grade to be exact and it finished to when they were in high school in ninth grade to be exact they had a really short run compared to that of boy meets world but i kind of expected it to have a shorter run anyway because it's disney channel like the only disney channel show to this day that has had um five seasons is bunk who is watching Bumped, okay? That's what I want to know. Who is freaking watching that show? I tried to watch it because I love the Jesse cast so much. Like, I love Karin, I love Sky, I love Peyton. I, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry. I can't do Bumped. Which shows where the characters get older, get better, but in this case, this show did not. They peaked in 8th grade. Do you know how horrible that sounds? You peaked in 8th grade, Girl Meets World, okay? Now before we even get into more of the issue issues, now that I gave you some background about the show and my relation to it and how I feel about it, like I said, I'm a big fan of the show so I feel like I can say everything I can in this video because I'm a fan, I was like really invested into it and yeah. And we will not be talking about that communism episode, I am sorry, I, I am not the best educated on communism, okay? When we tried to learn about it in um, high school and in middle school, I didn't understand the thing. I, I'm sorry, I'm just not the best educated on that subject, so it is just best if I sit that part out. I don't want to get on here and say something that's wrong or something that sounds right and it actually isn't, and I just don't want that to be an issue with you guys. It's okay to admit that you're not educated enough on certain things to understand why they are the way they are. So, yes, no communism talk here. So, we're going to talk about ableism. Now we know uh, Farkle is our cute little quirky character of the show. How every show has the quirky friend. He is that. And it's this one clip. Like, this is the one clip people kept sending to me because, um... They were talking about how upset it made them. And I remember there was a whole episode about Farkle having autism. And I never really liked that episode. I just thought it was kind of weird. Because I really didn't like the way Maya, Riley, and everyone else was reacting to the way things were being settled. Because they were doing tests on Farkle to see if he had autism or not. And the thing, my issue with that is that there's nothing wrong with having autism. First of all, clearly nothing wrong with that. My problem with it is the way they were reacting to it. Because every time they brought it up and whatnot, they just got really scared or anything like that. And they kept making it seem like, they were like, you don't have it, you're just overreacting. And what I thought was so stupid about that was because even if he did have autism, he's had it the entire time. So him officially being diagnosed with autism is not going to change anything about him. He's still going to be the same Farkle Minkus that you love and know. Like everybody was just being a horrible friend to him in that episode. Even the adults were being a bit weird about it too. I just that episode just don't sit well with me. It did not age well. Please like please don't show that episode to kids if you want to teach them about um disabilities and stuff like that please don't show them that episode because it is awful like they were acting real real funky and ableist about him if he did have autism or not and of course in the end he didn't have it what not and i really feel like disney wasted their time with that storyline i was like y'all really just could have did without if y'all were gonna portray it like this and then for him to not even have it in the end weird Really weird, weird.
we we're going to talk about diversity y'all know this was gonna come up we talk about race relations all the time on this channel this show has none there is none there is no diversity on girl meets world at least not until the later last two seasons but it's not that's not even saying much okay like season one of girl meets world it was very vanilla it was just full of white people i haven't seen no people of color up in there in the main cast it was just like little day players that came in and out that were on um, black didn't contribute nothing to the plot and here you had little extras color uh, people of color in the background extras of color has to be more specific about that y'all need to actually learn how to use the term of color correctly like if you're talking about a specific group of people like let's say actors you say actor of color not people of color actors anyway let's just back to the subject but that's how it was in season one there was no diversity whatsoever none none at all it was annoying season one honestly Compared to season two, season one is honestly kind of weak. But then once we hit that trash third season up in there, season one is better than season three. So the order goes from two, one, three. I know you guys are telling me you're tired of me rubbing my nose. But y'all, I have allergies. Um, my medicine is wearing off. My face itches. I'm sorry. I can't do much about that. Season two, we got Zay. Zay literally was one of the best parts of the show. We all love Mr. Zay Babino. Zay is played by Amir Mitchell Towns, who is the son of DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yes, I was shook when I found that out. My dad was actually watching the show with me. He was like, that boy looks like Jazzy Jeff. And I was like, daddy, that's his kid. And he was like, yeah, I, I had no idea. It's really interesting to find out. But yeah, that was like a little fun fact. And Zay gave this show, he ended up being the new comic relief character because Farkle was no longer used as comic relief midway through when he had his old Donnie Barnes regular guy on um, makeover. And that, to be honest, Farkle's makeover worked for the best because if Farkle was going to be like that a whole entire season's run, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. No, Farkle. It was time for a change. It was time for a change. Zay did end up becoming a new comic relief character but him being a comic relief he was the only character that had sense let's just be real out of all that whole little friend circle he was the only one that had sense shared one brain cell and Zay had it most of the time now the background on Zay's character is actually really really horrible and it's honestly really really problematic because Zay is known to be a troublemaker he runs his mouth too much he's always starting mess and in the beginning of the show, not in the beginning of the show, Lucas, okay, yes, in the beginning of the show, Lucas was the new boy at the school. And nobody really knew much about him. That's what made him like kind of like this mysterious new boy. And then in the episode where Zay moves to New York, I'm assuming Zay got in trouble and that's why he had to move to New York too. Lucas was expelled from his school in Texas. So he moved to New York to get a fresh start and the reason he was expelled is for getting in a really really bad fight that Zay provoked. Okay Disney. Okay Disney. I just had to have a moment of silence on that one. I was like why was his character background? Why did it have to be so problematic in the first place? Like that whole thing about Lucas moving from Texas in the first place was weird. I was like, y'all could have had a kid move from another town, but you have him move across the country, and then his best friend followed him across the country. I thought that was really weird. Like, uh, uh like, who's following their best friend like that? And they were freaking 13 year olds. Who's following their best friend that young? No. Outside of Zay, we did end up getting two more black girls on the show. Uh, they just had brief appearances. We had Vanessa, who played Zay's love interest, his little girlfriend back home named Vanessa. I don't know if I said Vanessa already, but we did. Play body, also oh, great, also oh, wonderful Chandler Kenny. I love Chandler Kenny. She is so talented and beautiful, and I just think everybody should support her and whatnot. She was the um werewolf girl in Zombies. Now it's weird because I seen the first Zombies movies, but I didn't see the second one. I don't know why i didn't watch the second one i just never got around to it and my problem with vanessa is that even though she had like an appearance one time she was mentioned in the show a few times before and after i just don't i 
feel like they could have did so much more with her character. Like, because I think that would have gave Zay, like, his own little storyline to the show. Because I felt like every character in Girl Meets World had their own plot line. Whereas Zay really didn't have anything. He was just known as Lucas' little troublemaking friend. And then once they kind of killed that, they just dealt with it in that episode. They just... He was just there sprinkled in and out for diversity. You know how Disney is about that. But yeah, I really feel like they could have just did so much more with Vanessa's character because there have been Girl Meets World fan fictions where she was mentioned a lot more and was actually in the plots. Same with Missy Bradford, but Missy Bradford was white. But you know what? Missy Bradford could have brought a lot to this show. And they only used her one time. That's another problem with Girl Meets World is that they introduced really interesting characters one time and never brought them back. That's a problem with Disney Channel in general. But Nessa, the main reason I just wish she stayed around is because it would have done so much more for Zay's character. The next black girl on the show we had named is Yendra, who was also played by the actor of the same name. Now, Yendra, she was just one of the classmates. It seems like they really just had Yendra in the room for diversity. That's just what it felt like because Zay was the only black kid in the class until Yendra was added in. And she was cool. Nothing bad about her. Just nice little black girl. But she, she just was a classmate. Nothing to her character. She didn't really have a character. Like I said, I really feel like they just put her in there to say they had diversity in the show because I felt like people were complaining to them about season one how the show had no color off from Yinja, we go to Renee. And this, Renee honestly makes me so angry because Renee is the character that got Maya in trouble in that third season episode where Maya got arrested for vandalism. And they hyped that episode so much on the internet. And then when it actually came out, it was a bummer. It was a letdown. The entire season three of Girl Meets World was a letdown, okay? That's why when it got canceled, I was sad. But at the same time, I was just like, I can see why it got canceled because this last season is trash. It is utter complete trash. Who told y'all y'all can do this? But yeah, um, like I said, it was like Zay all over again. Renee was, it, it makes me so angry because she literally was one of the girls that got Maya in trouble. She was the bad girl of that. And the thing about it is that, like I say before in other videos, is that I wouldn't mind her being the bad girl if there was more diversity on this show where they had other black people on the show being portrayed as good. And I don't count Zay. Like, they, like Zay was a troublemaker. Okay, they don't have much to offer when it comes to characters of color because they bring them in and they take them out real quick or they just come in, bring them in for like, they say three lines throughout the episode and then they go. This one for last because it makes me so annoyed is Sean and Angela's relationship. Sh Angela was Sean's girlfriend from Boy Meets World and everybody thought, I'm sorry for hitting my face y'all, my nose just is freaking killing me right now. Sean's, the love of his life, okay? They were perfect. I love them and I'm not really a big romance person or anything but I specifically only watch Girl Meets World and will only look, not Girl Meets World, Boy Meets World and look at the screen when Sean and Angela were there. They were just such a beautiful couple. Nothing bad about them. Unlike Mr. Corey and Topanga over here which was the they, I swear, Cory and Topanga, that was like toxicity city. Like, I couldn't take it. Like, they were just so annoying. There was nothing cute about that relationship. I couldn't do it. I could not handle Cory and Topanga. I'm sorry, y'all. Everybody keeps talking about their relationship goals. For why? He cheated on her. He disrespected her. Topanga could have done so much better than freaking Cory Matthews. Anyway, yeah, Girl Meets World broke Sean and Angela up. So Sean could end up getting with Maya's mother, who is a white woman. Now, there literally was no purpose of them doing that. What exactly was the purpose of y'all breaking Sean and Angela up? Y'all could have had them together. They could have had a nice little interracial family for Disney Channel. Like, I can literally rewrite Girl Meets World for the better, okay? But no, they just thought it was best to get rid of the beautiful interracial couple and make Sean sad all over again. And I'm just like, why didn't y'all want a black woman and a white man to be on y'all show so bad? Why does that hurt y'all so bad? Speaking of, I always kind of got on my nerves about Disney Channel is that they didn't really, didn't, they were not here for like a lot of interracial relationships. Like, yes, we had the interracial relationship in Twitches and whatnot, but when it came to a lot of other things, they always found ways to avoid it if they could.
Like, that's my problem with Disney Channel, okay? Like, the diversity sucks. There was no reason for y'all to break up Shining Angela in the discussion. A part of me feels like that Ben and Danielle had a lot to do with that, but I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say anything. You, if you guys know, you know, because um, if you watched my last Boy Meets World video, you, you know. And the last issue for this show is the grooming. This, I think this may be the worst thing of it all. Well, you guys want to know what happened. You know, Maya is Riley's best friend. Um, Riley has an uncle who is like probably three years four years older than her I think I don't know but basically when um Maya has a crush on Riley's uncle cute nothing about it like we all can like know when scenarios are like that where a little kid has a crush on you you don't entertain it you just think it's kind of funny no this dude would entertain it it was really freaking weird like I didn't like it like it's obvious that he didn't like Maya but he liked the idea of Maya giving him all of that attention so he just always entertained it and there was a whole episode about where Maya and Riley snuck out and went to Josh's college dorm to like get his attention and I was just like Disney Channel y'all really did that y'all really freaking did that eighth graders going to a college party what and the thing about it is that Josh knew it was wrong okay he knew it was wrong. He told her parents, but not okay. We, okay, that's how we should have ended. There should have been nothing else more to Josh and Maya. And then we go to season three. Season three is so beyond trash. I hated that whole Ski Lodge trilogy so much. It was freaking terrible. Lee literally watched all that mess for no freaking reason. Because as you guys know, um, Maya ended up liking Lucas. Lucas was originally planned out to be Riley's love interest. And then, you know, when stuff happens in production, you figure out who has more chemistry with who. My, uh, turns out Maya and Lucas had way more chemistry than Riley and Lucas, okay? I hate Lucas. I hate it as much as I hate Bao. It is a horrible relationship, okay? you It gets no love for me. So, about Lucaya, that's the name of the ship. Everybody was just wanting Gerwin's world to do Lucaya so much and then when we found out they were bringing Josh back into the episodes and also I can't stand Uriah Shelton I feel like I should just go ahead and throw that out here he is one of the main cast members he was the first cast member of the show that I didn't I started to dislike okay can't stand Uriah Shelton I'm not about to say what he did you want to know go look it up can't stand him anyway Josh goes on the ski trip like because the um the ninth graders had like the annual ski trip that they would go on josh went on the ski trip for what reason we don't know why what was your purpose of being there talking about i'm here to chaperone why is a little 18 year old boy coming to chaperone 14 year olds that's freaking weird okay so it's obvious that he came because he wanted to try to monitor maya which exactly was what he was doing so he straight up told Maya, like, I kid you not, go watch Girl Me Ski Lodge Part 3. You're going to be angry if you watch it. He told Maya that you only like Lucas because he's not me and you think you like him, but really you just like me and you're replacing him with me. So, yeah, you still like me. And I was just like, it's you really not getting no play in college right now. You're really not getting any type of play by girls in college right now. So you're literally grooming a freaking ninth grade girl back into liking you that's there's nothing cute about this relationship there are so many kids out here that think that josh aya is adorable and it's really freaking disgusting i would be really really creeped out if uh when i was in ninth grade and there was an older dude having interest in me because it scared me down when i was a kid i hated it i hated when older guys would try to hit on me it was extremely disturbing because the main reason they did that is because they thought that you, because you were young they could take advantage of you and it's obvious that's what josh was trying to do and i really feel feel like if Gourmet's World was not on Disney Channel something worse would have happened with that relationship and I'm glad that they just went ahead and stopped it where it was because that was just disgusting and I still can't believe Disney Channel frequently had a grooming plot line okay at least the overall problem with Gourmet's World is that this show did not know how to write people I'm so sorry this show did not know how to write people my problem with it is that it's obvious that everybody in the show is an idiot from point of time to time that's life that's middle school okay I give y'all props for that 
but nobody seems to learn the consequences of their actions in this show okay like with boy meets world that's one thing i've learned is that the show was about life lessons and the characters yeah they messed up but they paid for their mistakes okay girl meets world they did not they were just too easy with them they just gave them a slap on the wrist every time this show does not know how to relate re relationships in general like if they saw something was not working they kept trying to force and enforce and enforce and enforce it until it just kind of like everybody kind of forgot about it like when um the whole ski lodge thing where riley and lucas officially became boyfriend and girlfriend please tell me that they barely had any kind of interaction with each other whatsoever like disney no you cannot do that non-linear plot line when you introduce something like that because disney channel has done that plenty of times before when they introduce a couple in the show and there's still a couple episodes 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 later with disney here they just try to play it off it's like a one and done thinking we forgot like no riley and lucas are boyfriend and girlfriend why are they not acting like it they barely have any interaction at all that was really freaking dumb of you and he's like during that time of them being together he still had better chemistry with maya like i mm -mm. Like I said, I know Girl Meets World is one of those shows that you can come in anytime and watch and whatnot, but this show has had horrible continuity. In conclusion, this show did not age well. <laughs> It did not. It's not aging well whatsoever, but I still love it for nostalgia purposes only. I was really obsessed with it in my junior, like my sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school. <laughs> That's just Gerby's world right there. Ew, Jesus. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this little rant about me going off about this show and how much it disappointed me. I really love you guys and I appreciate you every single last one of you. Please don't forget to follow me on everything. Please don't forget to check my bio because all my important links are down there. A lot of people ask me certain questions or whatnot, asking me if I have this and that and the third, and it's all in the bio. I have the links right there for you guys to click. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. And yes, please have a good night. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. And acknowledge the wrong in Girl Meets World because it's a lot. It's probably far worse stuff that I pointed out that's not in this video. Goodbye.